<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had some fun dancing there. I certainly enjoyed myself and Corvina. It was great, great to see some of your moves. I'd now like to welcome Aaron Hick. Aaron is based in Brisbane, Australia, and today he'll be talking to us about the skills of a humanitarian surveyor. Bring the house down, Aaron. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a pretty tough act to follow. Um, great song. I loved it. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen here. Um, share the screen. And I believe we should be off and running. Share. Okay, so hopefully you can see my, my screen now. Uh, and I'm going to quickly talk about what I learned uh, volunteering as a surveyor. So kia ora koutou, Māori and kami, g'day mates. Hi everyone, I'm Aaron. Congratulations on making it to the workshop. I grew up in New Zealand, which makes me a Kiwi, and I currently work in Brisbane and throughout the Pacific. Here is me with my wife in Kiribati, where I volunteered as a land survey trainer for nearly two years within the government surveying and GIS team. Kiribati, oh, let's go back, sorry. Previous. Kiribati is uh, a beautiful nation made up of 32 coral atolls and one coral island. It spreads across much of the Pacific Ocean, centered on the equator. It has very low lying, uh, with the highest point of being above, about three meters above sea level. It is stunningly beautiful with white sand and crystal clear tropical water. My role there included delivering course material to six tertiary, oh, my bad, Aaron, six would tertiary you mind, students. Um, just sorry to interrupt you. Would you mind if we just turned your video off? Um, your audio is just sure. a little bit choppy sometimes. Absolutely. Thank you. Video. Okay, so uh, my role there included delivering course material to six tertiary students, um, studying surveying, as well as providing general support and capacity building for the broader team. What wasn't specifically part of my role, but also happened was having an amazing time while meeting amazing people whom I still call friends today. Maori Raro Saraime, who's hopefully in, in the workshop somewhere. Uh, so today I'm going to chat about my experiences and link this back to the VCSP values, which I'll introduce you to. I'll discuss some of the challenges and eye-opening realizations that I had during my time overseas and hopefully provide some thought-provoking topics and sources of information to help expand your horizons too. The VCSP has adopted the values of volunte volunteerism, respect, curiosity, and sustainability to sit at the core of the organization. My experience volunteering for an extended time has given me plenty of experiences that I hope to share with you today and show how, how it's important to both enact and espouse these values as a potential VCSP partic participant. Hopefully I can impart a bit of what I've learned uh, that can in some way help you to in your journey to assist others. I encourage you to think about these values and also make a note about what you think would be a good value or skill to have. So first one, volunteerism. Um, oh, wrong one. Um, I will zoom in on that for you. So volunteer, volunteerism is the act of volunteering your time and skills to help others. You've likely heard of the SDGs, which were developed by the United Nations to be a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity. And volunteers are essential stakeholders to achieving and supporting all 17 SDGs. Volunteering also has many proven and unintended benefits to those who engage in it. These include improved human connection, improved cultural understanding, improved soft skills and empathy, and also having an amazing experience. We need to be conscious that we are volunteering for the right reasons. We're not in it for the selfies or the hashtags, um, but or for any personal gain, but instead to use our abilities to assist and fulfill others' needs. As you'll see, there'll still be plenty of photo, photo opportunities and personal development opportunities. There is a good parody Instagram page called Saviour Barbie that points out some of the many pitfalls 
found in people who are not volunteering for the right reasons. And I recommend checking it out and following it to get a deeper, deeper understanding of these issues. VCSP's model focuses on connecting with the, those with surveying skills and a genuine interest in helping others with those who seek assistance. You'll be working in, a, in the industry that you have some knowledge in and it's all about assisting others, though you'll certainly gain new skills too. Um, I'm not sure if my baking skills are necessarily designed as knowledgeable or defined as knowledgeable, but everyone loves a cake. So respect. Uh, respect is central to, volunteer, to any volunteering arrangement. Know that there will likely be differences in culture between your home and where you're volunteering. Cultural awareness is a challenging and important topic that warrants some research. It's not always that easy to find information, but VCSP is a con as a conscious, conscientious organization will no doubt be able to help. It's so amazing to see such a range of backgrounds engaging in this workshop today. And hopefully we'll get the opportunity to make new acquaintances and this presents another opportunity to engage with different cultures. Speaking from my experience as a Kiwi, there are many norms in my culture that can tend to dominate in a developing nation setting. So being aware of your surroundings is critical. Picking up on social cues, um, picking up on, sorry, I just lost myself there. Picking up on social cues is key as often people can be shy or reserved and not necessarily explain the in intricacies of a situation. Respect is recognizing that others' perspectives, backgrounds, and priorities are likely to be different to yours. Be open to this and take the opportunity to learn from it. These also feed into curiosity, which is another VCSP value we'll talk about soon. So one example of different cultural expectation uh, that I came across uh, was the, the high esteem that Westerners held and, and the expectation to dance and sing karaoke and speak publicly that comes with it. Uh, and if anyone was paying attention to uh, me dancing in the last in the last screen, then you'll know that, um, yeah, I'm not a very good dancer. Uh, so sure, while I was there to help with surveying boundaries, my also, also my personal boundaries were being pushed pretty often in this space. I definitely can't dance or sing. So in, uh, there are two main general communication styles in the world. New Zealand, for instance, is a very low context culture where we are really implicit. And so most of the time, all the information that you require will be actually stated. There are clear standards around communication and it is acceptable to clarify information that is lacking or misunderstood. Many other na nations, however, are high context cultures where communication is implicit or unspoken. High value is placed on long term relationships and building trust between people is paramount to achieving results. Facial expressions and body language are particularly important and often these nonverbal elements of communication are more important than the actual words spoken. Uh, so we're going to do a quick Mentimeter now and see if we can get an idea of the range of um, high, high context and low context uh, cultures in, in the room today. Uh, can we share the Mentimeter please? Okay, so, so jump in. Yep, sorry, you go for it. I was just going to say a, a reminder for anybody who may not um, have been around when we first introduced how to use Mentimeter. At the top of the slide, we have the instructions. Just go to www.menti.com and use the code 42449009. Great to see some responses coming in. And remember that you have some resources about high context and low context cultures in your participant handbook to refer to. This is it's great. I'm I'm really liking the um, the range that we have in the room. And I think it will be really interesting to see in some of the breakout uh, 
sessions that we have, um, those those different communica communication styles be coming into play, and um, hopefully everyone uh, now understands a little bit more about it and can take that into account when they when they are uh, you know communicating in a in a setting. It's particularly difficult over over the internet and over video because you don't get all of those. Uh, social cues that you may otherwise. So um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And um, clearly, there's certainly a, a clear winner in the high context states, um, which is certainly not not what I grew up with, or I know uh, best myself. And um, it's really great to see it. So thank you. Thank you, everyone for engaging with that. Um, I think we can probably move on. Thank you. I assume my screen is sharing again still. No, sorry, I shared okay. over the top of you. That's all good. Let me just reshare it. Share now. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone for that. That was great. Uh, so one example of um, uh, that I came across in terms of respect was um, uh, shown on the right there is a teaching aid that I bought uh, one day after doing a session explaining how GPS works. And one student in the class put up their hand and said, but the earth is flat. Now I was certainly a bit stunned and asked why he thought that. He replied, because my ancestors told me so. Now I was surprised and concerned, certainly with offending him. So I stumbled over, well, your ancestors are much older than me and maybe the earth used to be flat, but surveyors can prove that now it is round. So luckily for me, that was acceptable for both of us and we were both able to move on. There will be times when you need to think on your feet, but the overall goal needs to be building trust and knowledge at every stage. It's important to recognize that not every perspective we hold is necessarily true and that it can be more than one perspective that is correct and fair. Uh, remember also that you're an ambassador for your organization and your country, wherever you are, and you'll definitely be noticed. So take that into account. So curiosity, it's such an amazing value for VCSP to recognize. It's easy to go in with a preconceived notion of what to expect and what you will do once you're there. If, however, we flip that on its head and go into a volunteering situation with our eyes open to the situation, we will certainly learn more ourselves, but also be able to help in a more meaningful way. There will almost certainly be things that, you, that don't go to plan and rather than getting frustrated, you can improve the experience and your effectiveness by taking the time to ask questions and learn more about the situation or the culture. This will build trust, long lasting, lasting relationships and ensure an improved ability to assist. Some areas that you can be curious about that will likely help you to succeed are the capacity to learn. What, what kind of background do people have? Um, I'm extremely fortunate to have had access to quality education from an early age. I left school with developed skills around research and understanding that others may not have. Willingness to learn. As we talked about in respect, priorities can often lie elsewhere, especially in family, church and community. Where I'm from, work is often number one. It's right, right there and you need to be focused on it during the day. But often work is way down the list in some other some other nations. Uh, wariness in some cultures, knowledge is extremely important. Traditionally, people, uh, yeah, traditionally people tend to keep it to themselves and only pass it on to select family members. Since knowledge is held so dear, in some situations there can be skepticism as to why we would be so willing to share it for free. A flow of information. In high context cultures, information is not always obvious. In my time, I often worked on an improvement to systems and I'd really and I'd really feel like it achieved something great for the organization, only to find out a little tidbit of info later, later on that ensured it wouldn't work. Being constantly curious will help to resolve some of this early on. And pace. Don't expect to work at a pace that you're used to. 
In some cases, it may be much faster, and in many, it will be much more relaxed. Remember that your partner organization may have dynamic needs. So focus on your assignment there, but also take opportunities to build capacity wherever it's possible. By doing this, you'll ensure that you have an amazing time, experiences, and memories. In other words, be prepared to respectfully take on opportunities to build capacity when they arise, and be prepared to seek them out by being curious. So sustainability. Curiosity leads well into sustainability. As I said, um, curiosity allows us to understand the partner or receiving organization's needs more deeply and therefore allows us to assist in a better way. Now, sustainability can be about the environment, such as repurposing old junk steel found on the beach as survey marks. It can be about um, looking at some equipment that, that is not working, uh, doing a little bit of Googling, a uh, little bit of intuition and trying to see if you can get that equipment working again. I was very lucky to be able to do that here. Uh, and we had, went from having practically no equipment to something that was working well. So that was great. Um, and the old adage of, of giving a person a fish and feed them for a day or teach a person to fish and feed them for a lifetime holds extremely true in a volunteering situation. It's so important to not do everything yourself, but bring along the people you're working with for the ride and teach them so they can continue when you leave. Sustainability also goes for yourself. Don't put too many expectations on yourself or risk burning yourself out. Try to go with the flow and be curious instead. So final thoughts. VCSP has some, some well thought out values and ideas but I'm also interested to see what you think, and we'll give you that opportunity now. When, when on the assignment, you're a role model to your colleagues and an ambassador to your country and to FIG and BCSP, you will be noticed. Anything that we teach needs to be fit for purpose and a situation needs to be able to continue after you leave. Building capacity in those yet that you are there to help is the key. I've just lost my screen. Give me one second. Is the key. Um, now, I like the idea of looking at volunteering. So the overall goal is to do yourself out of a job and to provide the skills to others to be able to do, do things themselves rather than simply completing tasks for others. Think about the ongoing support. Maybe you can provide informal support afterwards also. Are we I'm not we sure if I'm still sharing or is your, no, we've just lost your screen. But would you like to have the mentee poll Give, up as you I'll just share my screen again and then okay. I will get it in one second. Great. Let me share my screen. So I think the mentee meter came over the top. Apologies, give me one second. No worries. Need another dance party while I'm figuring this out. Share screen, this one, share. Um, okay, so uh, thank you very much for listening. I really hope my experiences and advice have helped you to give you an understanding of the type of things to expect, even though each opportunity will certainly be unique and different. The best advice I can give is to go into it with open expectations and open mind and be prepared to enjoy the ride through both its challenges and highlights. Bring your expertise, but also bring your respect and curiosity. I can guarantee that if you do this, it will be an extremely rewarding experience, both for yourself and your partner organization. So now, um, we're going to go to Menti quickly. We've got a couple of minutes left and uh, talk about what give you the opportunity to 
to add uh, your input into what values or skills you think are important when volunteering. Please, um, please share that Minty now, thank you. Fantastic, thank you, Aaron. So while um, Kamshin is sharing the Mentimeter screen with the results, uh, we just have one question for you. So we've got, um, and my apologies if I pronounce this wrong, Taranga from uh, Kiribati, who would like to know, is this tool for land management used in our country? Uh, which tool specifically? STDM? Um, I I'm, believe so. I assume. Not as far as I know. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can't see the name, so I can't pronounce it, but Taranga, well, I'm guessing. Would um, it be, um, what are the tools used for land ma management? So Kiribati is, uh, has a reasonably robust uh, land management system. Um, they, there is a very, very comprehensive database uh, that, that spatially holds the, the location of all, all boundaries. Um, and land tenure, a lot of the land tenure is leased by the government and then leased back to people in the, in the heavily developed areas. Um, but it is a real challenge to understand uh, the ownership because there are many owners and, and the, the exact location of those boundaries is quite often under, in dispute. And the process to, to confirm that those boundaries is quite laborious through courts and many meetings, and it can take years to, to confirm. So um, Kiribati actually, yeah, it has, it has some quite, quite good information about boundaries in one respect, but in another, it can be quite challenging. All of that is held in a database within the land management division um, in, in Baidiki, uh, in a QGIS and map info database. So I hope that that hope that helps. And Maori, Maori to Kiribati, come the bit in Maori. It's great to hear from you. Um, well, there's there's a lot of a lot of different skills and values. It's great to see. Um, yeah, they're really interesting. I, I hope that we can uh, share this again um, afterwards. I, I assume we're getting pretty close to the time to move on, but um, really great engagement and thank you everyone for listening.